Hi guys, so today I'm going to talk about the different systems, anatomy and physiology and diseases that you should uh, look up and research, especially in your first year of university, but really all through um, being a student nurse. And the reason I decided to do this video is because when I started as a student nurse, there was so much to research. And if I went to a book and looked up, for example, the cardiovascular system, there was so much that I could look into or look at, so many diseases I could research, um, so many defects and things like that. And I didn't really know what was common, what wasn't, what I should focus on, what I shouldn't focus on, because there's no way of knowing, of, of, of retaining all that information and being able to know everything about every system. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't go and research those things, especially if you're in placement, you come across a child with a particular condition that you don't know about, go ahead and research it, that's great. But in this video, I just wanted to give you guys a foundation of um, kind of the basics, the bare minimum that you should research and know about just so that you're not then overwhelmed with um, lots of information and lots of things to research and your research and your kind of reading can be a little bit more focused. Now, first of all, I'm going to talk about the respiratory Now in this video I'm Now in this video I'm going to talk about seven systems the cardiovascular respiratory neurological renal gastro musculoskeletal and the endocrine system. Now, obviously that's not every single system, it's most of them. Um, and like I say, this isn't gonna be extensive because it's just the basics that you need to know because I don't wanna give you loads and loads and loads of things to research. Um, so we're gonna start with respiratory because um, that is kind of the most common thing you'll see in paediatric nursing. And there will always be a child on the ward with a respiratory complication or condition. So really the things to research is the anatomy and physiology of the respiratory system and the differences in the respiratory system according to age. So for example, a newborn baby or particularly a premature baby will have a much less developed respiratory system than a 12 year old and therefore they're more likely to become very sick with certain conditions than the 12 year old is. There are also certain conditions that are a lot more prevalent in the young and don't affect the older children as much. So it's important to know how the lungs are made up about the bronchus and bronchioles, um, the alveoli, how oxygen is taken into the lungs, how it's breathed out, how it's transported from the lungs into the blood. That's all really important to understanding disease and how disease affects that pro normal process. Also the mechanism of how we breathe as it is a lot more effort for our body to breathe out than it is to breathe in and that also affects the assessment that you give to a child. So it's a lot more effort for our body to breathe out than it is to breathe in and you'll see that in the assessment of a child with respiratory disease. So in this, so I forgot to mention before as well, I'm also in each system going to give you three or four common conditions to then go so I forgot to mention before as well, I'm also going to give you three or four common conditions that you can then go and do more research in it related to each system that I'm talking about. So in the respiratory system, so in the respiratory system, um, one of the most common things that we see is bronchiolitis. So that's a really good thing to, to research and um, go and see how the lungs are affected by bronchiolitis, as well as asthma and pneumonia. So those are the three things that I think you definitely should go and research that you'll be seeing on a daily basis in placement. And lastly, for and lastly for the respiratory system is respiratory assessment. It's really important to be able to accurately assess the respiratory system and it's good to do a bit of reading and research into that as well. 
Next, for the cardiovascular system, again, a really extensive knowledge of the anatomy of the cardiac system will really help you out when it comes to um, dealing with shock and dehydration and cardiac disease in children in placement. Understanding how the body's oxygenated and how the heart pumps um, and the different mechanisms in the heart for how the heart pumps and what a normal rhythm is. I also think it would be really helpful to do some research into the fetal development of the heart. That would be particularly helpful when you go into placement in special care baby units or in um, neonatal intensive care units as they'll often have fetal related disease and it also just helps to understand um, the anatomy and the physiology of cardiac disease when you understand how the heart develops in the fetus. And the four diseases that I want you to go and look up and particularly look into are arrhythmias. Um, and there are many arrhythmias you can look into, but SVT is definitely one of them. And then VFVT, which are your shockable rhythms, would be very good to look into as well. Common um, arrhythmias in children, but you can look into as many as you like. kind of connected VSDs or ASDs or ventricular septal defects and atrial septal defects. They're holes either in the ventricles or in the atrium um, and they are quite relatively common um, cardiac defects in children. And also related to fetal development, patent ductus arteriosus. So that would work so that will come in really handy in your fetal development and understanding how the, the fetal heart develops to understanding um, what patent ductus arteriosus is and what it means for the child. On to the neurological system. I personally wouldn't go into a lot of anatomy and physiology of the neurological system because it is very fast and very confusing um, and quite a lot to take in. I would definitely research how to do an accurate neurological assessment. So in that, we're also looking at AVPU and GCS as well as um, further neurological assessment. Lumbar punctures are also very common in placement and it's good to know um, why lumbar punctures are done, what cerebral spinal fluid is and why it's being tested and how they are done and how you care for a child that is having a lumbar puncture or has had a lumbar puncture. And it might also be helpful to reset some of the scans that we use to test the neurological system, such as MRIs, CTs and EEGs. And I have three, actually, and I have four neurological systems for you to look up. First being meningitis, very common kind of um, infection that particularly affects the neurological system. Head injury, very common in paediatric nursing, very common in nursing in general, how to look after a child with head injury, what that might mean for the child, how that affects your assessment. Cerebral palsy, again, very common condition that we see in children. Sometimes we're not um, seeing the child directly related to cerebral palsy. They may, may come in with um, gastro issues or chest infections, but it's good to understand what cerebral palsy is and how it affects a child. And lastly, epilepsy. Understanding about seizures and seizure management is really important because, again, you'll see quite a lot of children with epilepsy and it's really good to understand the um, physiology around that and how to deal with that. On to the renal system. The renal system, I personally find the most difficult system to understand and really engage in, but it's really important for so many of our nursing assessments and skills and conditions to understand about how the renal system works. Now, you can go really deep into the renal system and 
to start with I don't think that you need to do that you might want to do that if you're going to a renal ward particularly um, but otherwise just the basic anatomy of what the function of the renal system is what the kidneys do how they do it why it's important and what can happen if the kidneys go wrong in that I'm also going to throw in urine analysis it's really important to understand um, when to do urine analysis why and exactly what you're looking for and what those things mean Now this time I've got three conditions that you can go and look up. The first being, the first by far being the most common is infection, either urine infection, kidney infection, bladder infection. That's definitely what we see most in terms of renal system. The second would be chronic kidney disease, which then leads to kidney failure. It might also be helpful for you to research a little bit about dialysis as well. And the third is also a condition we see relatively often is nephrotic syndrome. Onto the gastro system, again, the anatomy and physiology of the gastro system is really helpful to understand when you're given nursing care. Diet and feeding particularly is something to look into and understand um, what a healthy diet is, why we need a healthy diet, um, and also additional ways that we feed children eat. For example, through tube feeding with an NG tube or an OG tube or an NJ or an OJ or a PEG or a PEG or a PEGJ or it's called different things, um, why we might be doing that and also how to care and safely um, feed a child through those mechanisms. I would say particularly for PEG children, I'd say particularly for children with um, pegs it would be really good for you to research how you care for a peg and keep it clean and keep it dry um, and how you nurse a child with a peg. In addition to that it might be good also to look into stoma care. Now in my nursing um, experience I've only looked after I think two children with stoma so it's not that common um, but you might come up with it, you might be in your first day or your first placement and there's a child with a stoma. So it's good to have a little bit of knowledge what a stoma is, how the nursing care is. You might also go into a um, specific gastro ward for children, in which case there'll be stomas, all, the, all like most of the children will have stomas. In which case lots of the children will have stomas. And for gastro, I've only got two conditions for you to look up. One is dehydration and how that's affected by things like gastroenteritis. So I only have two conditions for you to look up in this and they're kind of connected, um, which is gastroenteritis and dehydration. Now gastroenteritis in children is probably the most common cause for dehydration and it's important how that to understand how that affects the gastro system but also how that affects the wider body with dehydration hypovolemic shock and things like that penultimately the musculoskeletal system now again is very vast and you do not need to understand and know every single bone of the body their names and where they are the bones that i would protect pay the bones that i would pay particular attention to and research are the femur, um, the tibia and fibia, the radius and ulna. So the bones that are most commonly seen in terms of fractures and issues that we have would be the femur, tibia and fibia, which sometimes is called tib and fib, um, and the radius and ulna, which sometimes is called RNA you can absolutely go and research other bones if you want to but those are probably the most common bone complications that we will see in the hospital in that it's really good to look up different types of fractures because there are lots of types of fractures and um, that you can get some more dangerous than others some also indicating 
um, possible abuse such as spiral fractures and it's really good just to have an indication of when someone says oh this child has a spiral fracture or an open fracture or a green stick fracture or anything like that you understand what that means I would also say that being able to assess the kind of skeletal or circulatory system is really important so when we have a child that has a fracture in particular and um, wherever it is we need to be able to do circulatory observations on them understand that is the hand cold is it the correct color making sure that that fracture or whatever is wrong with that child's bones um, or muscles or any that kind of system is not affecting this the blood circulation to that particular limb or body part It would also be really good to research about casts, how to put on a cast, how to care for a child with a cast and also traction because we see that quite commonly as well, how to care for a child in traction, um, how to manage traction, what is traction and why we traction children. So I haven't really particularly got any diseases related to the bones for you to look up but fractures and traction and um kind of care would be like the things to that you'd most commonly see in your nursing practice and things to research lastly is the endocrine system it would be good for you to look up the anatomy and physiology particularly of the organs and glands that are in the endocrine system In particular, the glands and the pancreas and the testes are probably the things that we see most problems in most commonly in paediatric nursing. It's really important to understand some of the hormones and the effect that they have on growth, on energy and things like insulin and breaking down sugars um, and how that is affected if those things, if you don't have enough insulin, if you don't have enough growth hormone, things like that, how that then affects child's development. And the three, and for this one I've only got two diseases for you to look up and one is adrenal insufficiency and the second is type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes in particular you will see a lot it's good to research that have a, a knowledge of what type 1 diabetes is how it affects a child and um, dk how we deal with a nursing care newly diagnosed diabetes things like that and then just on a general level it's good to know in the body where the organs are even if you don't know lots and lots about each organ, it's important to know which side your appendix is on, which side your liver is on, which side your pancreas is on, whereabouts that all is in the body. Now, I really hope I haven't overwhelmed you because the whole point of this video was to make it a little bit simpler for you to know exactly what you need to look at and what you need to research. So I really hope that I've achieved that and, it's, and that's done that for you and you have a bit more idea to kind of what to focus on in your research and in your reading. Um, and I will probably do a video going into more detail into some of these symptom, um, systems and also some of these the illnesses that I've mentioned but that will take me a bit of time and research and, and things myself but for now I really hope this has helped you and thanks so much for listening and I'll see you in my next video guys bye